vibration of using webpack state card and statements. Let us use the sequence 101 detector. State diagram is illustrated here. On reset, it moved to the initial state S sub zero. It is a more machine. When input is zero, it remains in a state S zero. But if it is one, it will target to S one. From S1, it moved to S2. If the input is zero, and from S2, it returned back to S0 if the input is zero. In S1, it remained there while the input is the next input is one. Finally. From S2, if the input is 1, it transition to S3 with an output of 1. And the rest of the transition is as shown here. When drawn in state card, this is the final uh, state diagram, which we will now go over there to illustrate the real-time demo. Let me activate the Silence version 9.1. Webpack 9.1 is starting up. It takes more time, very slow. It's a huge program. Click to remove the tip of the day pop up window. Takes time to to initialize. Okay, now let us close residual project of previous activity. We normally had to in both create new project and put it in some location of your folder. Since I have already done that, I got them right here. So I need only to open that project. This will speed up the video demo. I put them in my folder 91 inside the sequence 101 diagram folder. The project folder I put is sequence 101 when you create a new project and this is the project. The project has now started. It uh, is initialized, and let me double click that. It open up the source that I have uh, specified, which is so-called state diagram during the process of creating a new project, you will be inquired what kind of source you like to use. I specified from the list of selection state diagram. So this diagram blank set pops up. To create each of these bubble, which I will superimpose here and remove them anyway, click this button 
and click somewhere there. You can, if you double click the interior, you can change the name of the state and even supply the corresponding output value. Let us say that is one for the sake of demo. Then you will have this more state assignment that you have provided. To click the reset, click this button and move it there. That will be your uh, like I did here. Now if the and then to to introduce transition you click this transition button click inside until you got a square box and then for uh, so called uh, looping back to itself here you got that look back if you're not happy with the position then you can pull this hook to reshape them the way you want it. If this at else is not correct, like for instance we like x1 equal to 0, simply double click that uh, to open it. And then you can modify. Let me see, I got to click somewhere here. Oops. Yeah, like that. Then, then you can say x1 is equal to code 0. That will be the condition of looping back right there. Okay. But of course, I'm going to remove that. That is just for demonstrational purposes. After you have sketched out the state diagram which we had illustrated earlier, then you can finalize this in here. Once you're done with that, you go up to the menu up there, generate HDL, click that, and just retain the variable you're going to use for output, and you may select optimize it. Then you will see this compiled perfectly, no problem, identify the result statistics, just click close, it will generate this long list of a long list of uh, HDL code, which is already done for us. That uses, in this case, as you can see, it uses one half assignment, meaning meaning to say for each state here, is the four state we have represented by S0, S1, S2, S3, only one of them will be equal to set to one as an initial. In this case here, it is captured as a process which is sensitive to signal clock reset next state value of those S's. So he's checking on reset, then he will activate the initial state S0 as the active one and the rest is off. If it is not reset, then he will move the next state value to the present state. In the process, if one of these signal changes, then only this process